my gloss is popping. Mm, girl, yes. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. You have definitely noticed in the past couple of months, I haven't been posting a lot of videos. And in my previous video, which I uploaded over a month ago, I mentioned that the main reason is university and the stress that it brings with it. I have talked to a lot of counselors and I have everything figured out right now. So I think that starting from April, I'm going to take it a little bit more like slowly regarding university and I'm going to have more time for other things. By the way, I this is like a thing that I'm wearing. <laughs> I thought I should address these kinds of straps because what are they? So it's been over six months since I last did a wrap up because every single month starting from September, I haven't really read a lot due to school, but also due to having a boyfriend right now. I am here to do a very long overdue wrap up. <laughs> Let's just jump right into the video and the first four books that I read are all Roald Dahl books. I got the box set during the summer and I absolutely loved Matilda when I read it in March and I just needed to have all of his books and I've actually read a lot of them in this half year. The first one that I picked up is Essio Trot and this is um, I think my least favorite of all of them that I read. This is basically a story about an old man and an old woman who are both single and it's all about keeping turtles and stuff like that. After that, oh my god, I did really enjoy the next one that I read by Roald Dahl and that is George's Marvelous Medicine. This is basically about George and all of a sudden his really evil grandma has to like babysit him and then he makes this really strange medicine out of all these weird ingredients that makes his grandma like grow. It's funny and I really enjoyed it. It's super short just as well as SEO Trot. That one was like 50 pages or a little more. This one is just over a hundred. I also did like a poll somewhere in September about which Roald Dahl book I should pick up next and a lot of the people said The Witches and this was a very kind of creepy story, especially if you would be like a kid. I could totally imagine you having nightmares about this. In this book, you follow a boy and his grandma who move back to England because his parents have died and now he's living with his grandma again. And his grandma has always told him these really creepy stories about witches and that they exist. And she also told him like all the characteristics of witches. And then all of a sudden they go on a vacation and the boy starts to notice that a group of women where he is in the hotel are kind of suspicious. I really really liked it. The last Roald Dahl book that I read is The Magic Finger. Again just a really quick story. I mainly read these books because they were so tiny and I just felt like I hadn't really like read a book in a long time so just reading super short stories made me feel good about myself. <laughs> I think I gave SEO Trot a 3 out of 5 stars. I gave George's Marvelous Medicine a 4 out of 5 stars. The Witch is also a 4 out of 5 stars and I think The Magic Finger a four as well. I really enjoyed this story even though I don't remember what it's about anymore. And the first like real book that I read again is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I would have never expected for me to read this book. First of all, something that I've noticed that I have a lot of the times is when a book is so hyped up, I feel scared to pick it up. Everyone was raving about this book like two or three years ago here on BookTube and I just didn't want to pick it up because I'm so scared that it's gonna like disappoint me. I enjoyed this book so incredibly much, like so much more than I was expecting to. I think I gave this one like a four or a four and a half out of five stars because it did take me a long time to finish, but that was because of my own reason. Reasons. When I read this, I flew through it super quickly. The characters are really interesting and I love this world. So I need to buy a second book and I really need to have like a little refreshment about all the details in this one. But I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to read more of this series. Next up, I finished In Zero Open Marketing for Shine Soul by Hank Green. Okay, I looked it up and in English, this is called An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. I got sent this by HarperCollins. So thank you so much HarperCollins for sending me this book. Due to everything like uni and my boyfriend, I haven't been making any videos, so I haven't uploaded a review of this book, but I got this right before it came out. This was such an interesting, different book from what I've read in such a long time. It's also not really young as Adult, I'd say it's definitely more new adult or like an adult novel about a girl who lives in New York and on this evening all of a sudden a weird statue appears out of nowhere and she's the first person to make a video around this statue that she calls 
Carl. We follow her because she's really like diving into the internet fame and you follow how she feels and how she acts and what are these Carls because they have been appearing in so many other cities all around the world and it's really kind of a mystery. It's been such a long time since I read a book in Dutch again and I actually really really enjoyed it. I believe there's gonna be a sequel out and this book just overall surprised me. It definitely wasn't my favorite book but it was very interesting. It kept me on the edge of what are are these Carls doing and like what's their purpose what's gonna happen it was also kind of creepy I think I gave this one like a three and a half out of five stars oh my god the next book that I finished oh this mm, it's a good one guys it is what if it's us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera this collaboration between these two authors was anticipated so very much and I've only read one book by Adam Silvera before this one and two by Becky Albertalli and I really quite enjoyed their books and especially a lot of people were wondering how this collaboration was gonna be because Adam Silvera usually writes books with a very like uh, emotionally heavy topic it's usually kind of sad and Becky Albertalli overall is really quite like cheerful I can tell you guys that this collaboration is so perfect. It's so raw. It's so honest. It just makes you want to fall in love. So Ben is bringing a box of his ex-boyfriend stuff to the posting surface. He wants to mail this away and gets all of the like energy out of there. Arthur stumbles upon Ben at the post office. Arthur is here just only for the summer and the two try to like meet up multiple times, have dates, but it all seems to kind of fail and why is it not working? It's all in this book. It was so good and realistic and I would recommend this to everyone. One of my goals for 2018 was to read five books which I have received in my fairy loot box. I did not <laughs> do that in the end. I think I picked up three. This is one of the books that I picked up and surprised me a lot because I really liked it and it is Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. This is the first book in I think a duology but I'm not too sure. It's also a special fairy loot edition because this is a hardcover and this book is only available in paper back. This book surprised me the most because it went in such a different direction than I expected it to. In a world where women have no rights, sister Serena and Nomi face very different fates. One in the palace, the other on an island prison where women must fight to survive. Serena has spent her whole life preparing to become a grace, selected to stand by the heir to the throne as a shining example of the perfect woman. But her headstrong and rebellious younger sister has a dangerous secret, and one wrong move could cost both sisters everything. Can Serena fight and will Nomi win? So intriguing to learn about the graces and how women should be, as you guys can probably tell from the uh, synopsis, this is like a feminist. I believe this book is like supposed to be a fantasy but it's very light on the fantasy element. The world is like made up but that's the only thing that's fantasy about it. I feel like it's more of a feminist dystopian fantasy book. It's like how I would describe it personally. I really love the feminism in this. I love the bonds that the people created um, and it was oh, so thrilling especially the end had me hooked and I cannot wait for the sequel which I will definitely be picking up and it will come out I believe in June or July of 2019. Next up I read another Roald Dahl book. I'm sorry guys. And that is The Big Friendly Giant or The BFG and this was when I was younger one of my favorite movies. I watched the cartoon movie which came out somewhere in the 1980s so many times when I was younger so I was really excited to pick up the book version but it quite disappointed me. One of the main reasons why I did not like it a lot is because of how the way the BFG speaks. Like I do know that this is a children's book and the BFG is not like a real human so the way that he talks is not completely how humans talk as well. But it annoyed me <laughs> sometimes. It's, sometimes it was very clever like how when things are not right they're left instead of wrong which it just I feel like how Roald Dahl looked at the English language in this book is how a lot of people who do not speak English as their uh, how'd you say that? Their first language? Like I do, it's not my first language. This is a good example. And it's really funny, but it also kind of annoyed me sometimes. This super short book took me a month to read, which was too long for how quick I can normally read it. So this, I think, oh, I haven't really told you guys any of 
I haven't told you guys any of the ratings of the previous books, but I think I'd give this one like a three, three and a half out of five stars. So I forgot to rate What If It's Us. I think I gave this one a four or a four and a half out of five stars. And I think for Grace and Fury, I gave it a four out of five stars because it surprised me. It wasn't my favorite, but I really enjoyed it. Then I really wanted to reach my 2018 reading goal on Goodreads. That was 30 books and I only needed to read one more book. So I quickly picked up The Giraffe and The Pelly and Me by Roald Dahl. I think this is one of my favorite quick Roald Dahl books. It was so much fun. So that was my 30th book of the year. Then the first book that I finished in 2019 is The Martian by Andy Weir. I was so extremely excited to pick up this book. The first 150 pages were such a struggle for me to get through. I uh, study biomedical sciences myself, so I do have like a little bit of a, a backstory in like science and I can kind of understand it, but this was too much science for me to be honest it really quite bored me it was interesting because we follow our main character called mark i believe he's been stranded on mars and he needs to like figure a way to survive and maybe eventually go back to earth in the first few weeks that he was on mars he was only talking about how he was gonna create air and water and stuff like that and it is very interesting and it's really well thought out so that is definitely something that i cannot like deny that doesn't make me love it per se. It, for me, at a certain point, it was too much explanation and I couldn't really see how it all worked. So that was a shame. But then around, I think, one third or half of the book, it turned around, action came in it, and then I started to really enjoy it. I would give this one like a three and a half, a 3.75 out of five stars because I really quite like the humor. I didn't think it was like super funny as a lot of people said. So yeah, a little bit of a disappointment from what I was expecting from it before because I thought that I was going to love this book and I just liked it. But yeah, the first book that I read in 2019. The book that I finished yesterday is After the Shot Drops by Randy Rabay. I initially saw this book in a bookstore in The Hague in the Netherlands when I was there with my boyfriend and he plays basketball. So I was like, oh my god, look at this cover. It has like basketball things on it. <laughs> then I read the synopsis and I looked it up on Goodreads and this book had like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It hadn't been read by a lot of people so I also really like that because then I can sort of like discover a book. In this book we follow Bunny and Nasir and they used to be best friends in high school but then this past summer Bunny transferred to one of the more like bigger like better high schools and he didn't tell Nasir anything so they haven't been speaking for a long long time but Bunny is super good at basketball. He has potential for the NBA. Nasir's cousin has been having a whole lot of trouble and this book is so much more than only basketball and I'm happy about that because I still do not understand or know the rules of basketball. It was such a fun element to see how much these characters love to play basketball and I see that so much in my boyfriend and his friends as well. It dealt with so many things like equality regarding race or money. It really focused on friendship but it also had a really good relationship in it as well which was really realistic which you do not see in a lot of young adult books which make me really happy. I think I would give this one a four or a four and a half out of five stars. It was not my favorite book ever but I think it brings across a really important message. So those are the books that I have read. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I showed you guys in today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. You guys can also follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course I have good reads. I mean, I'm a booktuber, but I also have Instagram, Snapchat, plus an email address and links to those will be in the description bar down below. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope that I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!